Let's get some exercise locating partial charges. So the problem says identify any polar covalent bonds in the molecules below by drawing a delta minus, that squiggly thing is a lowercase delta, it means a little bit, so slightly negative and slightly positive, delta positive, in the appropriate places. Now to be able to do this, the concept that you want to be able to, that you want to understand is electronegativity. So electronegativity is how strongly a nucleus pulls on its valence electrons. Hopefully it makes sense that the more protons you have in a nucleus, the more positive charge there is, and the more the nucleus would attract electrons. So as you go to the right in the periodic table, you get more and more protons in the nucleus. And so it, uh, the ability of the atoms to attract those valence electrons gets bigger. So electronegativity increases as you go to the right. It also increases as you go up, and that's because as you go up, the atoms get smaller, and so the valence electrons, which are the outermost electrons, are closer to the nucleus and feel it more. So qualitatively, atoms get more electronegative as you go up and as you go to the right on the periodic table. Quantitatively, there are also numbers given for how electronegative atoms are, and you can see that those numbers on the periodic table shown in this slide. Now the most electronegative atoms are nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and chlorine. So if you had to just qualitatively look at a molecule and identify uh, where you might have some, really, uh, some differences in charge, some really electronegative atoms, you want to look for N, O, F, and Cl. And those atoms are going to tend to be slightly negative because they're going to pull the electrons in bonds toward them so that whatever atom they're sharing the electron with, they're not sharing the electrons equally. Okay, so that's a qualitative way of assessing polar bonds, whether you have nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, or chlorine. If you want to do a quantitative way, a nonpolar covalent bond is going to be a difference of 0 to 0 0.5 if you use those Pauling electronegativity numbers that are underneath each symbol here. A polar covalent bond is between 0.5 and 1.7, and an ionic bond is greater than 1.7. Okay, so let's see if we can identify any polar covalent bonds in the molecule below by drawing a delta minus and a delta plus in the appropriate places, and here we're dealing with water. Water looks like this, three-dimensionally. And so, the first, just qualitatively, do we have a nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, or chlorine in the molecule? We do. We have the oxygen. So that oxygen is going to be slightly negative. Anything it's bound to is going to be slightly positive. And there you have the delta plus and the delta minuses for this molecule. Okay, let's see if we can do the same thing for ethanol. Identify all the partial charges in ethanol, it's drinking alcohol. This is what drinking alcohol looks like three-dimensionally. So first we'll look at the molecule and ask ourselves, do we have a nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, or chlorine? We do, so that's gonna be slightly negative, and anything that's bound to is gonna be slightly positive. And those are the partial charges on ethanol. All right, let's try to do the same thing with glycine, the amino acid glycine. This is what glycine looks like three-dimensionally. The red atoms are oxygens and the blue one is a nitrogen. So, we'll look at the molecule and we'll ask ourselves, is there a nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, or chlorine in the molecule? And there are. So next to each of those will be a slightly negative charge. Those atoms are really attracting the electrons that they have that they, uh, around them in the bonds. Anything they're bound to is going to be slightly positive. And so those are the partial charges on glycine. All right, finally, glucose, which is blood sugar, 
you can see uh, you know, it's dissolved in the blood at the top, but then if you just wanted to see what it looked like as a solid, that's in the bottom right. So, oh, this is what it looks like three-dimensionally. So, we'd look at the molecule and ask ourselves, is there a nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, or chlorine in that molecule? There are, so you'd write a slightly negative charge next to all of those, lowercase delta minus and then a slightly positive charge on anything those are bound to. And those are the partial charges for glucose. These partial charges end up being uh, very important because it's these partial charges that are going to attract one part of a molecule to another part of a molecule and make them stick together or react with each other. So that's how you can identify polar covalent bonds, bonds that have a slightly negative end and a slightly positive end, by drawing delta minus and delta plus.